Welcome to an introduction of probability. Here are the objectives. You can see there's only one. We want to be able to calculate basic probabilities. Okay, there's a lot of vocabulary happening when you learn probability, and that's uh, one of the things that trips students up. First, we talk about a trial or a probability experiment, and that's just any kind of process that produces a random ex a result, like flipping a coin, rolling die, uh, picking a card, uh, picking you know a marble out of a hat, whatever it happens to be, those are the trials of the experiments. All of the possible individual results that can happen are called outcomes. So for instance, flipping a coin, you have the outcome of heads and tails. Rolling a six-sided die, you have the outcome of one through six. Uh, rolling two six-sided die, and you have 36 different outcomes. Because you could have a one and a one, a one and a two, a one and a three, so on and so forth. Right? So when we talk about outcomes, we're talking about all the different uh, ways that the experiment or trial can happen. And then the sample space is the collection of all of those outcomes. So if you were going to do the sample space of rolling a die, it would be one through six. If you were doing the sample space of flipping a coin, it would be H and T for heads and tails. Um, if you're doing the sample space of drawing a number out of a hat where you have the numbers 1 through 10, then obviously you have 1 through 10. So let's uh, practice a couple. See if you can identify the sample space for each of the following experiments. Know that the outcomes in a sample space are listed between brackets and separated by commas, and we don't list outcomes twice. So rolling a single die, we've already talked about that, right? That should be one through six. What about birth, order, gender for two children in a single family? Well, can you see how you would have boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, and girl, girl? And yes, boy, girl, and girl, boy are different, right? Even though you still have one girl and one boy, it's different because boy, girl means that the first kid was a boy and the second kid was a girl versus the first kid being a girl and the second kid being a boy, right? So oftentimes order matters with these types of things. And when we're dealing with dice, order matters with dice as well. It, it, it shouldn't, but it does. The roll 2-3 is considered a different outcome than the roll 3-2, even though really it, it seems and it feels like the same. In order for dice questions just to work well mathematically, we have to let 2, 3, and 3, 2 be two different outcomes. So what I tell my students is when you're dealing with dice so you don't get confused about knowing that 2, 3, and 3, 2 are different, yet you only have 4, 4, you don't switch them and have another 4, 4, right? The doubles only happen once, um, is think about the dice as being two different colors, one red and one white die. So when you roll a 2, 3, that's a red 2 and a white 3. When you roll a 3, 2, that's a white 2 and a red 3, right? They've changed colors. But when you roll a 4 and a 4, you have a white one and a red one. If you switch places with them, you still have a white one and a red one, right? So that's why doubles don't get listed twice. Okay, here's a sample space for tossing two coins. Heads, 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 tails, 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 heads. A trial, as we said, um, is anything that produces random results, and then the outcomes are all the things that come from those results. The sample space just gathers all those outcomes together, and then an event is a subset of those outcomes. We'll talk about um, flip a coin two times, what's the probability of the event of getting exactly one tails? Well, you come up here and you go, all right, well, flipping a, a coin two times gives me these four outcomes. And out of these four outcomes, this one and this one have exactly one tail. So there's two out of four. That's a one half or 50-50 or a 0.5, right? So that would be the probability of that event. Classic probability or what sometimes is called theoretical probability is just figuring out what probability should be if we were able to run the experiment an infinite number of times. So there's experimental probability, which is the observed probability, what we see when we actually run the experiment and have some trials. And then there's classical probability, which is what we get when we basically envision working with an entire sample space. So if we work for, with all possible ways of flipping a coin twice, then we're, we're dealing with classical or what most people call theoretical probability. And then figuring out the probability of any event is very simple. You just calculate, right? count up the number of possible outcomes in that event, and then divide by the total number of outcomes in the entire sample space. 
So with my previous example, the probability of getting exactly one tails, right, out of two flips, is two out of those four flips. If I said, what's the probability of getting at least one tails, you can see that this one satisfies it, this one satisfies it, and the last one satisfies it, right? So these three all have at least one tails, so those would be the three good ones out of the four total, and it'd be three-fourths or 0.75. So oftentimes I try and simplify this whole number of possible in the event over total number of outcomes in the sample space as good over total, right? You count up all the good ones, i.e. the things that do what you're trying to find have exactly one tail or have one or more tails um, over the entire sample space. Remember that probabilities are always a real number between 0 and 1, and they can be 0 if it, it can never happen, and they can be 1 if they're guaranteed to happen. So 0 would be something like uh, the probability of me dating a supermodel, and 1 would be death and taxes, right? Or the sun coming up tomorrow. Okay, suppose you were asked to draw a card from a standard deck of 52 cards. A standard deck of cards contains the following types of cards. So if you don't know what a standard deck looks like, I suggest you uh, Google deck of cards and go to Google Images and you will find images similar to this that kind of list all the cards out so you know what a, a deck of cards looks like because you will be bombarded with uh, card questions whenever you're learning probability. You need to know the four um, suits, right? You've got diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. Diamonds and hearts are both red. Clubs and spades are both black. Um, it's a very symmetrical, right? All four suits have the exact same cards. You have ace, and then two through ten, and then jack, queen, and king. Ace is considered a one for most cases. I, yes, I know it's 11 in some games, but when we're talking about these things, we'll just treat it as a one. Uh, face cards all have a value of 10 as well. But when they talk about face cards, these are the only ones that have pictures of people with faces on them. So that's how you can remember. So right, so there's three in each suit. So there's 12 total face cards. There are 13 in each suit. So there's 52 total, right? Half of them, 26 are black, 26 are red, right? It's a lot of symmetry to these things, which is why we like using uh, decks of cards when we ask questions. So what is the probability that a card you draw is red? Well, good over total. There are 26 good over 52. 26 over 52 reduces to one half, and that's a 0.5, a 50%, or a one half probability. It just depends on how you want to display it. And that brings up something else. Um, always pay attention to how you're asked to report probabilities. Probabilities are normally reported as fractions, always reduced, right? That's the, so um, there's a hierarchy to numbers. If at all possible, we would rather list our probability as a reduced fraction because one-third is better than 0.33 because 0.33 isn't actually one-third, right? One-third is 0.3 repeating on and on and on forever. So if you want to be perfectly accurate, you would go with a fraction. So you always report them as reduced fractions, right? You wouldn't say 26 over 52. You'd say one-half. The second choice would be to report it as a decimal. So instead of one half, you'd report it as 0.5. And then the third option would be to report it as a percentage or 50%. Okay, so if you're not told otherwise, go with fractions. Otherwise, do with whatever they tell you to do. What's the probability that a card you draw is a diamond? Well, how many diamonds do we have? 13 out of 52, or you can think of it as one out of four suits, which is what 13 out of 52 would reduce to. What's the probability that the card you draw is a face card? All right, well, you have three, six, right? I told you you got 12 out of 52, and you can reduce it. But also, you're hopefully seeing the pattern that because everything's symmetrical, it's going to be three out of these 13, three thirteenths. And then what is the probability of drawing a red spade? Well, spades are black, so red spades are impossible. So the answer is zero. All right, so that's um, all of those. Let's try this example. Suppose you grab a snack from a bag of chocolates that has four caramel with milk chocolate, four peppermint with white chocolate, six dark chocolate with mint, two raspberry with dark chocolate. What's the probability that you randomly grab a raspberry with dark chocolate for your snack? Well, how many good are there? There are two, because there are only two that are what they're asking for, right? Raspberry with dark chocolate. So you get two out of what's the total? Well, you got four, four, six, and two, right? Or, or uh, 16. So it's going to be 2 out of 16, which of course reduces to 1 eighth. And you could list it as 0.125, but I always like fractions, so leave it as 1 eighth. Okay, empirical probability, the only difference between empirical probability and theoretical, 
or classical, depending on what your book calls it, is that empirical probability are the results that you see from an actual experiment being run rather than what you get in theory. So when you talk about, um, you know, flip a coin a hundred times, what's the probability um, of getting heads? Well, it should be 50-50. But if you actually flip a coin a hundred times, you could get 47 heads and 53 tails. So then the probability would be 0.47, right? So empirical probability is looking at an actual event that's happened. You're still going to count up good over total, only now you're going to be counting them up from something that's happened in the real world rather than theoretical numbers. Okay, so here's an example. Libby's conducting research on the accuracy of weather prediction from her local news channel. She recorded the forecast and the actual weather for two weeks. The following table shows her results. And you can see that they weren't that great, which is pretty typical of, of uh, weather people. They don't seem to get it right a lot because it's not an easy thing to predict. Using empirical probability, what is the probability that the news channel accurately predicts the next day's weather? Okay, well, out of all of these, how many were accurate, right? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like they got eight of them correct out of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Eight out of 14, which were reduced to four sevens. That's all we do, right? So empirical probability is still good over total. It's just you're using observed data rather than theoretical data, because you really can't have theoretical data about weather predictions. You'd have to actually observe those types of things. All right, how about this one? Determine if the scenarios given are examples of classical or empirical probability techniques. Katie is curious about her chances of winning an e-reader from the Student Government Association. She polled her friends to find out how many of them filled out the survey to be entered in the contest. Tristan is interested in his chances of winning at the blackjack table. He determines the probability of what his next card will be by knowing the cards that have already been played. Based on the recent United States Census, the local government estimates the amount of growth the community will experience in the coming years. Okay, so let's think about them. The first one, she's conducting an informal survey. She's just asking kids um, what they all did, and not all students are included, so therefore the probability is empirical. Right? She's, she's basing it on observed data rather than the entire sample space. Part B is classical probability since all cards have an equal chance of being dealt at the beginning and Tristan adjusts his chances by looking at the ones that have already been drawn, i.e. he's kind of like counting cards, which gets you in a lot of trouble if they actually catch you. Um, but that's empirical, sorry, that is classical because he's looking at the entire sample space. And then the next one, um, even though it's called a census, a census is not actually a true census. A census is supposed to be a collection of all data. And even though they try really hard, it's impossible. So it is an incomplete count. And because it's an incomplete count, it's not theoretical, it's empirical. Because you don't have the entire sample space. And that's really the, uh, the crux of the argument. If it's empirical versus uh, classical, it's whether or not you have the entire sample space. And that is the basics of probability.